So I'm here with uh, John Korea. Hey. They pronounce your last name right? Korea, just like the country. Korea. John Korea from Active Self Protection. Was over 100,000 followers now on Facebook? 108,000, I think, last time. 109 something. 109. Today, wow. So. Okay, fantastic. And I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm going to be asking John some questions uh, about himself and about about uh, Israel. Yay! Okay. So, John, I want to know about you. Tell me about you, how you got into this. I'm, I'm really curious what well, got you started in self-defense and, and all that. You know, I grew up shooting some with my grandpa, but not a lot. Um, I wasn't really, I served in the U.S. Navy for eight years, but you don't learn how to defend yourself in the Navy. When it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat in the Navy, you got big problems. Um, I got into self-defense. Uh, we, we homeschooled my wife and I when my kids were little, and so we had my son in martial arts uh, just as an extracurricular activity for him while I was going to seminary, while I was in graduate school, and then uh, I was running a video game store to pay the bills while I was going to grad school. And when the new generation of video game consoles came out, people were getting mugged uh, for them. You know, there were stories of uh, managers getting beat up, and I said, not me. So that's when I went. Actually, we're here at Shooter's World in Phoenix. This is where I got my CCW way back when. Uh, got my concealed carry permit, started carrying a gun. Um, but really kind of, I don't know, for the first couple of years, I was more like a magic talisman. You know what I mean? I put it on to be safe, right? And then when I got out of seminary, James asked me to come and take martial arts with him. James is my son. He yeah, asked me to come take martial arts with him, so I thought I'd do it for a little while. Turns out I fell in love with it, um, and so I've been doing that for about nine years now. And um, what kind of martial arts? Do you do? Uh, I said the American Kempo. Okay. Uh, or a derivative of American Kempo. Kempo is with the stick. No, uh, we do both armed and unarmed, so it's primarily empty-handed uh, combatives. But uh, we do. You have to at at the more advanced ranks pick a a tool to focus on, and actually my tool of focus uh, started as a stick. Now my tool focus is a firearm. Okay. So I'm kind of within our uh, our school. I'm the I'm the gun guy. I'm who everybody goes to if they want to learn guns. So it, it, the, your your interest in, in it started with self defense. Mm -hmm. with the, it, when you had the arcade, you said it was a video game store. Oh, so sorry, I sold sorry, Xboxes games. and PlayStation. Oh, okay. And, okay. You know. Yeah. Okay. And um, now you're you're a pastor of a church. I am here yeah. in Phoenix. Pastor church in the Phoenix area. Tell me a little bit about how your 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 religious values, how they fit in with, you know, all you know, all the self defense stuff and that, sure. that kind of thing. Well, I, I mean, I tell people all the time, you protect what you value, and you know um, that the most valuable thing that exists. There's only one thing in all of creation that's endowed with the image of God, and that's people. And so, uh, I want to protect that. So, uh, my my primarily my ethic of, of self defense comes from that because it says I value people and I want to defend them. Uh, I never, I, I tell this all the time and we do catch some garbage from some people on active self-protection because I said I never want to take another life if I don't absolutely have to. And even if I am, if I, if I drive the gun out there and I have to take a life, my goal is to stop somebody from hurting me. Now if they die in that process, that's on them, not on me. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not glad or giddy or excited. It's the last, last thing I want to do. Um, but you know, Probably one of my favorite passages in scripture is Nehemiah. And in Nehemiah 4, when Sanballat and Tobiah were laughing at, at the people and they were scared. And it says, Nehemiah looked at them and he saw the fear and he gathered them together. And Nehemiah 4.14 is one of my, my guiding verses. And he looks at him and he says, remember the Lord who is great and is awesome. And fight for your brothers, for your homes, for your wives, for your children. And that gave him the courage then. It says from that day forward, they worked with a sword in one hand and a trowel in the other. And the men worked with their swords on their side, and they took turns standing watch. Um, and they didn't have those swords to um, chop the meat at the end of the day. They were to protect them from bad guys. Interesting. I, obviously, we come from different faith traditions, but I'm, I'm also a religious person. And, you know, when talking to people in Israel about the security concerns there, and there are a lot, a lot of people that I talk to, uh, religious people, rabbis, and, and other people who are, you know, religious, whether they're rabbis or not, have said, you know what, it's not our concern. It's like, you know, God is in control, God runs the world, and we don't necessarily need to make ourselves crazy with trying to, you know, all the, you know, whether it's, you know, learning self-defense yeah. or hiring an armed an armed uh, guard for our mm -hmm. synagogue, or, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, uh, we see throughout history, regardless of whether you're a Christian or if you're Jewish, you know, I. I love some of what the Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership have done, JPFO, they're a great organization, um, that God uses means. 
He uses us. He uses people. Uh, and, and of course he's sovereign. So when tragedy happens, we mourn because I think he mourns. And, but we do what we can because he puts that in our hands, you know? Um, and he holds us responsible for our choices. So my friends, uh, especially my friends who are yeah. observant, you know, my friends who are Torah observant, I say, you know. You have friends here in, in Phoenix? Yeah. Or, oh yeah, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, observant. No, I'm not a ton, but you know, some. And, and I say, you know, um, God wants you to be obedient. Yeah, of course he does. Then he wants you to protect life. He values all life. And so he calls you to be obedient in that, protecting life. Right. And and so that to me is, of course, far beyond martial arts, far beyond firearms. That that has implications for all of life. Uh, but to me, it, it's a mandate. And I think Jesus certainly had some things to say about it as well. So I take his words to heart. You know, he's the guy that I follow. So, you know, um, uh, the radical rebel rabbi, we like to call him. But, uh, um, you know, I get that. And in the Christian tradition, too, we do have pacifists and folks who, who would say, well, oh, that's not uh, what you should do. Me, personally, I tell folks that if that's their conviction, then they should live out their convictions. But please don't put your conviction on me. Yeah, I hear you. That I'm trying to, to follow the book, too. Right. Okay, one thing, and so I've been following your, your page on Facebook, Active Self-Protection on Facebook. You should follow it. Um, and it's been fantastic. I've learned a tremendous amount. But one thing, and 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 I've I feel like I've, I've learned a lot. And as I mentioned to you, I, I carry I carry a knife. I carry uh, I carry you know little little things that I'm allowed to carry in mm -hmm. Israel. But one thing that I've noticed is I feel that my and and I, I you know I think my, my awareness is situational awareness is much better. Good. Transitional spaces I'm aware of. I, you know keeping my head on a swivel. All these things I've learned from, from your page. But I feel like in, also though my anxiety level is naturally. Significantly higher because I think you know, and I talk to my friends who are like, ah, oh, you know what, can't worry about that. And I kind of feel like, in some ways, I wonder if I don't know if ignorance is bliss, but in some way, just sort of saying, you know what, I'm not worried about it. They seem to be now they're they're obviously less prepared for an emergency or for right. a tragedy, God forbid. But on the other hand, I feel like they don't live their lives with all this constant, you know, anxiety that something's about to happen. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I would encourage you not to live with anxiety. I don't live in anxiety that something might happen. Instead, what I do is, is I feel like preparedness lets me be less anxious. In fact, I don't have to worry about things. I, you know, yeah, I'm aware. You know, we're gonna walk out to the parking lot here, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be aware. Now, I'm not gonna be paranoid. I'm not gonna think, you know, I'm not gonna go into my kung fu grips every time I turn a corner. But knowing that I have the attitude and the skills and the plan to take care of myself if a need arises, I don't have to be afraid of what comes. Also, I find in my daily interactions, my ability to take care of myself lets me um, lets me be far more kind to people. I don't have to worry about somebody. Is this person going to hurt me? Am I worried about them? Uh, as a pastor, I, I deal with borderline personalities quite a bit and, and people on the fringes quite a bit. And I don't have to worry about it. You know, I can, I, I can think the best of people because I don't have to worry about my personal safety. So I don't live a paranoid life. I live an aware life. I live for what's going on around me. And, and to me, the cool part is, is that if you're aware, and I see a, that, that could be a problem way down there. Well, I don't have to go down there. I don't have to wait until it's right here in front of my face. Oh no, now I gotta do something. Mm -hmm. I don't even go, you know, I'm just gonna avoid that. Let's sure. just go this way instead. Sure. And that just makes life a little better for me. So knowledge is power. It really is. Mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give to people in Israel, some of the people who are gonna be watching this video, people from my community mm -hmm. where we're not really allowed to carry arms as self-defense because of the gun control laws. And you know, first, first advice: fix that. Okay. Fix that with your well, elected officials. Maybe, maybe we can elect someone. I have a feeling that's going to be a very tough thing to overturn. It's a, a deeply entrenched. It, I got to tell you, it's surprising. My wife and I spent two weeks in Israel in 2012, and of all people, the Jewish people should know what the need for personal protection is. It's a dangerous place. You know, we we went on Temple Mount. And I gotta tell you, I mean, you can't take a thing up on the mount, of course, you know what I mean? They're, they're it's crazy. And I didn't feel safe at all. I felt very unsafe. Uh, walking the old city, you know? I mean, I loved, there was, I'm tell, I tell folks all the time, uh, you know, standing on the Mount of Olives or uh, on the Sea of Galilee, it, it's, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. I, I'd come live with you if I could. But, but you can recognize everyone else around you wants you dead. Do not defend yourself. So, 
There's so, my there's my soul. Okay, okay. I, I hear you. I, and, and my wife's grandfather's buried on the Mount of Olives, and you can't go and visit the grave because you yeah. might lose your life. Um, but uh, my question for you is, what advice do you have for us? Like we, so, so people who, who uh, you know, they said we, we can't get guns. What what advice do you have? For those of us in Israel who want to actually defend ourselves and protect ourselves, protect our children, what besides well, besides electing people who can maybe change the, those laws? You know, our, our founding principle is I am the weapon, all else are just tools. So you are the one who's in charge of your self-defense. Of course, situational awareness will keep you out of more problems than you can shake a stick at. Um, but, but having the ability to defend yourself doesn't require a particular force multiplier. So, you know, I mean, if By you, force multiplier, you mean? Well, something that lets you do more damage than you can do with your hands and feet. So, um, for example, a knife, yeah, a gun. I mean, you've got a, you know, you've got a, a knife, a pepper spray, a taser, uh, a kubatan, you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, I, I tell folks all the time, I mean, you know, we talk about, I keep this pen on me, and it's a pen. It's, it's you know, I pop the cap off and I write with it. but. It also is a very effective force multiplier, but it has to be very, very close. So if I had to defend my life, would I choose to use this, or would I choose to use a firearm? Well, if it was a deadly threat, I'd much rather use a firearm, sure. because it's more effective. It's a, it has a higher force multiplication. But this is not a useless tool. This can definitely do some things to help me if I'm properly trained with it. So the key to using a tool like this, or any tool, is yes. proper training. So, you know, I've been bugging you about this. You folks live in the land of Christ of God. Now I get it, every IDF soldier gets basic Krav Maga. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about get some official training, get some training from somebody who knows what they're doing. And it doesn't have to be Krav, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not a Krav guy, right? Uh, I see value in some of what they do. I'm a Kempoist. But find something in your town that can help you. And empty handed skills are fantastic. Uh, I'll tell you, again, I've never had to use a firearm to defend myself. I've used my pepper spray twice. Do you think people should carry pepper spray? Yes. You say you're the average citizen? or Yes. Just, so average men and women living in oh. Israel think everyone should have pepper spray. Every single person, every chance you can, everywhere you go with it. And I think that that's wise because, again, when as a situation comes up, you know, you're, you're in a, a cafe, and, you know, you're sitting and, and, and enjoying a cappuccino and, and somebody gets ugly with you. Well, that can defuse the situation. You, you pop somebody with the pepper spray, and they're done fighting you. It's miserable. Right. Right? You know, I mean, it's not going to do you any good if somebody comes in and stab you with a knife. Right. 